Hey guys, Maggie here with Ironside Ranch. Today we're going to talk a little bit about how to give a pig an injection. Okay, so first off, let me apologize. I know it's been a little bit since we've had a video. It's been over a month, I think, so we have a video. Uh, we have our other channel, Battle Drill 6. If you haven't seen that one, we've been working on that one a lot lately, and that's why we haven't been out here doing videos for uh, Ironside. We, we still have our animals, though, so we still have a, we still have our homestead. And uh, one of the things that we've been trying to do lately is get a, uh, you know, get all our injections and everything, our vaccinations done, and all that stuff kind of caught up and, and done. So one of the things uh, that we found is that if it's your first time dealing with pigs and you're not real familiar with pigs, uh, you might have a problem, sorry these carpenter bees out here drive me crazy, uh, you might have a problem um, actually trying to get, um, get get kind of the information that you need to do the injections and uh, and that's what we found. I wasn't familiar with pigs, I'd never raised pigs before so this was all very new to me um, and just took a lot of research and, and some trial and error. Um, <clears throat> one of the things that we found is if you're struggling to figure out how to do injections with your pigs, you pretty much have to have a chute of some sort. It took me all of an hour to build this. Uh, the, the, you know, then this was leftover scrap lumber, so uh, it does have to be very, very solid. So you want to use screws, not nails or bolts. Um, uh, screws or bolts, not nails, uh, because you want to make sure that, that they really, because they're going to put some force on this. Uh, you know, a 200, 300 pound pig can put a lot of power into a charge uh, to try and break these things open. Um, I need to reinforce our gate here a little bit because our our boar almost broke through it when I was doing his injections. This is our last pig here. This is Michelle, and uh, Michelle's pregnant, so she's getting a little bit different uh, different sh shot group today. Um, and uh, so there's a number of ways that we can do this. So we can use something like this, and we can stick it way back in their throat, and we can do an injection, uh, an oral injection with them, and actually pump that in there. Um, we found that we almost have actually, I don't think we've ever used this, I think we've always done it to where we've actually injected it into a piece of bread or something along those lines and actually just fed it to them. Uh, we found that that was significantly easier to actually try to get the uh, get the oral doses in them. Um, and that's actually what we do for a lot of our worming is we just uh, we, we, we just do it orally um, and inject it into a piece of bread and uh, then we're good to go. So, obviously, you have to have some type of syringe. Now, I don't know about you, but when I have a 200 pound pig that's basically getting a bee sting on his ass, um, he's not gonna be very happy. And uh, he's gonna be thrashing around in here a lot. So I don't want to stick my hand in there with this little itty bitty needle and actually try to do a injection that way. Um, the other thing is I certainly don't wanna be in an enclosed space with the pig. Um, and so that's where this, this holding chute comes into play. So like I said, you pretty much have to have this. Now you can do this by reaching over and doing the injection, but what we found is a little bit safer, a little bit easier option is actually having an injection rod like this. Now there's different brands of this, there's different ways of doing this. Um, seems like they all have their, their advantages and disadvantages. The one thing is, is get one with a composite rod. That composite rod is flexible um, and that, to, that helps you keep away from breaking needles. The other thing you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna make sure that you actually have the correct needle size on there. Um, and that has taken us some trial and error to figure out exactly what we wanna use. Uh, but we found an 18 gauge needle seems to work great for this size pig, for the smaller pigs. We'll use something more like a 20 or 22 gauge needle. Um, and then obviously making sure you're using an appropriate length. Uh, one inch seems to be a pretty good length for a lot of different types of uh, size of animals um, and different types of injections. You can do subcutaneous injections as well as intermuscular injections. If you're doing something intravenous, um, I don't deal with intravenous with the animals. I let the vet do that. Uh, but that's certainly not outside of anybody's capabilities. I've done intravenous on humans before when I was in the army, but never on the animals are a little bit different. So. Because we can come over the side, we've got a couple areas we can do it. We can do it over here in the ham on the back end of her or we're going to do it in the neck, and uh, the, uh, the the neck is the ideal spot to do it, but what we found is that it's so much easier to get this into their butt um, and get a good injection in there into, their, into that ham. Um, and you can see she was not happy about that. She did not get hardly any of her dose in there, uh, which is one of the advantages of doing a little bit thicker needle. So if you do, or a little bit heavier your gauge needle. So if you do something like a 16 gauge needle, uh, it seems to be a little bit easier getting uh, getting that injection in there. Um, and so it's a little bit less problematic in that regard. These do work pretty well, and that's again why it's so much easier to do this. Rather than sticking my hand in there and having somebody attack my hand, she is not happy about being in there. She's not happy about getting injections. I've never met a pig that liked them. Um, and, you know, that's a pretty good sized needle to stick her with, and we're going to stick her three or four times uh, to get all the injections done. It's best if you have medicines and vaccines that you can kind of mix the doses so that way you're sticking in the least amount of times. 
Um, but uh, bottom line is they are not going to like it no matter what you do. Um, and so you just kind of have to get over that. This is our last one to do. Um, then we got to go do the little pigs, which are not going to be thrilled either. Yeah, right. guys, you can see, like I said, Michelle is not going to be happy. She is really going to be upset about this uh, for quite a while. Um, she's not going to be happy with us. Uh, she will forget. She will get over it. Um, there's a little bit of feed in there, so we do like to give her some feed on the ground to help her out a little bit. But uh, it, it just, uh, guys, it does not make them, um, they, they just don't enjoy this. And, and so you, you really just have to kind of mind over matter and get yourself past that. If it bothers you to stick them, uh, maybe these aren't the right animal for you. Uh, <clears throat> ivermectin, you can give oral. Um, we like to do it injection to control the dosage, but a lot of times sticking them in here, I can just give them their ivermectin and a piece of bread. And then as a treat for them as well, um, after they get uh, get shot a couple times here, um, and so they, they do a lot better. Like I said, there's two places you can do the injection. You can do it in the hock, you can do it in the neck. Uh, the neck is the ideal place to do it. We do it back there in, in the hams um, and, and their butt, uh, simply because it's a lot easier doing it, this method, trying to get that injection in there. And if you're not 100% certain where you're going in the neck, you can cause some problems. Uh, you can get it into the fat, which won't do you any good. Uh, so you can have some issues. So that's why we prefer to do it this way. Um, particularly with our breeding stock. Uh, when you're raising out meat pigs or something like that, it's a little bit different scenario, um, but uh, with our breeding stock, uh, you know, you don't care about any discoloration of the meat or anything like that because uh, that's not uh, inevitably what they're being raised for. Um, so it's a little bit different rules, but uh, so anyways, remember, the thing is, is these are worth every penny, um, the, uh, the, the syringes on a stick, whatever, I forget what they're called, the injection rods, um, and then uh, making sure that you have a good, stable um, holding pin for the pigs uh, really, really helps out a lot. So uh, again, I apologize for it being quite a while since we've done a video, but uh, we'll have a few more out like this. We've got to do some injections for the goats as well and get them kind of up on their shots. And so um, we're going to go over and do the little feeder pigs here next. But uh, anyways, I appreciate you all watching. And uh, they, again, check out our other channel if you haven't done that. If you're interested in firearms at all, that's what that one's all about. Um, but uh, we keep that one off of this one to keep them, keep them separate. Uh, but that one's Battle Drill 6. Uh, I'll put a link down in the description. Um, but uh, remember, guys, check us out on Facebook, like us, and uh, share the videos. It does help us out. Thanks again for watching.